Good morning, folks. Gotta start with earthquakes. China's quake is listed by their government at 6.3 with multiple fatalities. USGS still has it under 6. They also downgraded a quake in Japan that rang much higher than 6.2, even up to 7.1 on 1 meter. However, the quake of the day was in Romania. Why would this be the quake of the day? Because of its rarity. It was the largest earthquake in that country in more than a decade. That's as significant as it gets. So the sun is quiet, as it will be for most of the time until Mercury conjoins the sun. The sunspots remain as they have, Delta class departing but staying silent with little happening even as umbras develop around it. Beta spread in the incoming region we've watched for a few days, but we now have a potential sunspot peak on our doorstep as another active region crests onto the disk. What's the last day of our star look like? Well, that's a little tricky. Helio viewer is lagging. The SDO sequences look scrambled beyond usefulness, but only some of them. The 193 looks okay. That black thing crossing the view is the moon eclipsing the sun from SDO's point of view. If you are watching today, I recommend ISWA as it has far less corruption in the images. Of course, we also still have our secondary tools. The solar x-ray imager on GOES-15 is working perfectly and is fully updated. Gong H Alpha is probably the most reliable of them all, and if you're hell bent on using Helio Viewer, the Proba Swap is rolling images in nicely. No major eruptions from the last day. The solar wind does show a bit of a density spike, followed by a small speed ramp. This could be the stream from the departing equatorial coronal hole as instability returned a bit to our magnetosphere. Having a bit of fun with images, how about this sunspot close up? Did I get you? It's actually a volcano, one of a few different terrestrial sites that could be mistaken for solar features. Top link for today is a Rosetta update with their best guess on the final resting place of the lander. It is linked below. Let's note a major flood potential at the Brazilian coastline off the convergence from this major South Atlantic system. In the United States, that same eastern high and northern low worked together to bring a brief warm up to the eastern states along with major rain and thunderstorms in the area. Backside though, more cold coming. Just ask your friends in the southwest today. In Europe, I've only got eyes for this convergence and just look at it. What a beast. Purple watch zones follow her to a T. Down under, we see everything converging on central Australia. Everything. Slight shift eastward over the next 24 hours and our top watch is in purple. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. Yesterday's Fly on the Wall episode took the last 20 minutes or so breaking down major developments in solar radiation management, also known as chemtrails. The chance we've been waiting for to blow this wide open may be on our doorstep as the officials may have made a critical error, and maybe more than one. That's one to catch. Got some current conditions, and even with Helio Viewer down, I've got a couple of shots of our star to close. It's 6.10 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.